Welcome to the third module for built environment assessment training. In this module, we're talking about the physical activity resource assessment or PARA. PARA is used to examine the availability, accessibility, safety, and quality of physical activity resources in an urban area. In this module, we will go over when to use PARA and what it's most helpful for, and we'll practice a bit how to use the tool itself. Like the active neighborhood checklist, PARA is an audit tool meaning that it's meant to assess the qualities of a space that might be used for physical activity or other health behaviors, but not about assessing those behaviors themselves. However, PARA differs in key ways from the ANC and may fit some study purposes better than others. PARA is used to audit the presence and the quality of physical activity resources in an area, and this tool can be used in a variety of settings, including urban, suburban, and rural areas. When you use PARA, you're evaluating a space for different features and amenities that might encourage physical activity, as well as incivilities like broken glass, trash, or overgrown grass that might discourage physical activity. Another benefit of PARA is the relatively simple coding convention in which the higher the number, the better the rating, and the lower the number, the worse the rating. We'll get to this detail a bit more later on. As its name suggests, PARA is best used for assessing community resources for physical activity, like parks, community centers, recreation areas. PARA is great for evaluating how accessible and enjoyable an amenity is to use. If you're interested in assessing some of the predictors of resource use, like whether people can easily access it, what amenities it provides, and whether there are any incivilities that might detract from its attractiveness to potential users, PARA is a good option. And finally, PARA is a relatively short assessment. The full length of it is pictured here. It also employs an easy to learn rating system, and these elements make training others on this tool relatively simple and fast, including community members or volunteers. Now we'll go over some details of how to use the PARA instrument. We also recommend doing a full overview of the PARA protocol, which is available on the resources section of this modules page on the BEAT website. First, under the administrative data, you'll select the type of resource you're assessing and its approximate size. The rules of thumb for assessing size are as follows. Small is anything less or equal to about half a city block. Medium is anything between half and a full block. And large is anything bigger than a full square block. These measurements are designed around urban environments, but the size of a block will vary depending on your location. Use your surroundings to determine the size of your audit area relative to other nearby spaces. After you note the basics of the physical activity resource, including its cost for use, capacity, hours, and signage, you'll start rating its features and its amenities. The rating system here is a simple zero to three scale. In all cases, rating something as zero means that it is not present in the resource but the meaning of ratings one through three changes based on whether you're assessing the quality of a feature and amenity or whether you're assessing the presence of incivilities. For incivilities, you'll use the rating system to refer to the amount or volume of the issue rather than its quality, because we assume that incivilities, as a rule, detract from the resource. As part of the assessment, you'll look around the resource to locate what kinds of physical activity features it has and the quality of those features. The features listed in the tool already include baseball and soccer fields, basketball, volleyball, and tennis courts, bike racks, exercise stations, play equipment and sandboxes, trails and sidewalks, and swimming and wading pools. If the resources you're assessing are likely to have other kinds of areas for physical activity, you can adapt the tool to list a more likely set of features. In this section, remember that if a feature is present, you're rating the condition or quality with the end goal of assessing its suitability for physical activity. So a poor amenity, rated one, will be almost unusable, like this overgrown tennis court and this bent basketball hoop. A two rating, on the other hand, refers to mediocre condition, meaning it's usable, but it needs some repair or treatment in order to facilitate use. For example, a basketball hoop that's stable but missing a net, sports courts with cracks but other features intact, sidewalks that might be buckled but are still usable. A three rating would be a perfectly serviceable feature with no or very little need for repair or maintenance. Nothing, in essence, to inhibit people from using it. As with features, the amenities section of the PARA instrument measures the overall attractiveness of the resource you're auditing for community physical activity. 
Resources might encourage physical activity if they contain lots of good quality amenities, like easy access points, bathrooms and water fountains, lighting, landscaping, and places to rest. If you can't properly assess an amenity, like here where we can't tell how exactly to rate landscaping because snow covers the ground, note that in your comments on the Para tool. You may want to come back another time to get a full picture of the resources amenities. An amenity is rated three if it is in good condition, clean, sufficient, effective, or not in need of any repair in order to use. This trail has a clear access point and appears to be well lit throughout, so we might rate both the access and lighting as three. Similarly, this court has good lighting and shaded shelters throughout. An amenity is mediocre, rated two, if it's in decent condition but requires some repair, cleaning, or expansion throughout the resource in order to really encourage use. This playground only appears to have one light, which may not be sufficient for its size. Similarly, the landscaping efforts surrounding this trail are definitely in need of maintenance, but the path itself is still usable. We would give both of these examples a two. Finally, an amenity is poor, rated one, if it's basically unusable. For amenities that may be present multiple times within a resource, like drinking fountains, bathrooms, or landscaping, this would mean that over half of them are broken or in disrepair or dead or overgrown. For amenities like shelters, they can be rated a one even if they are in great condition, like this example, because they don't actually provide any protection against weather or sun. In contrast, this shelter, while clearly in disrepair, actually does provide shelter and protection, so it could be rated as mediocre or a two. Finally, just note that landscaping here does not refer to grass that you might find on a field in the resource. You would have rated those previously in the features section. Overgrown or missing grass as a detractor to use is rated in the incivility section, which we'll cover next. In assessing incivilities, remember that this time you're rating the amount or extent of their presence in the resource space. There are a few things to point out here. First, para differentiates between graffiti and tagging and vandalism. Vandalism refers to the destruction of equipment, amenities, or features of the resource. Not just normal wear and tear like chipped paint, but something like the disassembly or removal of the features or amenities you've already rated. If vandalism is present, you'll rate it from one to three in terms of how much you see. One meaning a little, it's hardly noticeable. Two meaning that some things are vandalized, but it's less than half of the space. And three, a lot, meaning that it's really noticeable and that most of the equipment or amenities are in disrepair or unusable because of vandalism. Graffiti or tagging refers to painted markings. Some spaces might allow or even encourage this as public art which you should note in the comments and should not score as an incivility at all. But in many cases, you'll be rating this based on how much of the space you're assessing is covered by tags that are not wanted by the space. Some incivilities can be rated by the number of items you see. So for broken glass, dog waste, dogs unattended, evidence of alcohol use, evidence of substance abuse, litter, and sex paraphernalia, start with a rating of one to refer to one item or the equivalent of one item and go up from there. A score of two would then refer to few items present and three would refer to a lot of items present. Because litter is often present, we scale up the ranking. A score of one would reflect less than five pieces and a rating of three would reflect the presence of over 10 pieces of trash. Once you've assessed incivilities, you are done with your observation. When you're preparing your data for analysis, you will have to translate your para ratings into scores. For features and amenities, the rating you gave under each item is the same as its score. For incivilities, the rating system is flipped. So a rating of three, which means that a lot of a particular incivility was present, turns into the lowest possible score for that incivility, a one. A zero rating, which means that an incivility was not present, turns into a score of four, the highest possible. This may be confusing at first, but remember that PARA aims to assess whether a resource is good for encouraging physical activity. The absence of incivilities is actually a very good thing, deserving of a high score for the resource. A good rule of thumb for scoring is that the higher the score, the better the resource is for use for physical activity, and the lower the score, the worse it is. Once you've finished scoring, you can either add up your ratings and use the sum total, or divide the sum by the number of features or amenities listed in order to get an average. 
Which you choose depends on what you want to measure. Are you interested in documenting the number and general condition of all amenities and features in a single resource? Or are you more interested in comparing multiple resource environments across a community? You could even test perceptions or reliability by comparing multiple data collector scores of the same resource. Think about what exactly you want to know as you score. And as always, more details and suggestions are available in the resource section of this module's webpage. Congratulations, you now know how to use the physical activity resource assessment. To take this module's quiz and test your assessment skills, return to the module webpage. There, you'll also find resources for additional reading about PARA and the full protocol and instrument that you can use. See you in the next module.